I'm interested in what you see uh, are the challenges and opportunities for your platforms in that in that changing uh, environment. What are the sorts of things you think about uh, to make sure you're building a great platform that's appropriate for that uh, that new environment? So Sue, can I start with with you? Sure. Um, and I think that when one of the things that I think about a lot is um, funding, right? Um, as the former executive director of a nonprofit, you think a lot about funding, right? And you think about where the source of your money is and then how the source of your money affects how you do your work, right? And organizations tend to follow the money. They bias towards the money. They change their nature and how they structure themselves and what they produce and why they produce it and the ways in which they produce it um, in response to where the money comes from, right? And so I feel like nonprofit, Wikimedia Foundation is a nonprofit organization. Nonprofit organizations, if they get their funding from their users, which Wikipedia does, right, then they're in a terrific situation. That's the best possible situation. So Wikimedia is funded by donations from ordinary people, from dentists and lawyers and teachers and kids and whatever, right? And that means that it's oriented towards the needs of those people. When I look at a lot of the work that's being done today in, in terms of dissemination of knowledge, but in terms of the sort of grand digital transformation that we're experiencing, right? When I look at it, I look at where the sources of the money come from, and I ask myself, among many other questions, how do you create um, services and products that are publicly useful, that are for the public, right, in an ecosystem where that's not where the money is coming from? Right? So that's the kind of thing that I think about. Yeah. And, uh, Vivek, you've gone from our world, the non-profit, the, uh, non publicly funded university uh, world, to, uh, to Coursera. How do you think about your platform and, and uh, the sorts of things Sue was talking about? So I'll just start by saying what I've been surprised by, because in the public sector we always worry about funding. Yes. Uh, but in the private sector, do they do too? <laughs> When's the next round? When are we going to go out with our IPO? So they spend a lot of time worrying about money as well. But I think uh, the challenge, uh, and it relates to what you started with this morning, Roger, is that um, as, a, as a company, we do have to respond um, both to what our funders are interested in, but ultimately what the market is going to uh, want. And, uh, and want to pay for if we're going to survive as a company. And, and the danger that we're already starting to see is that there's a huge demand uh, for content in the lower left quadrant, things that will benefit people immediately, um, help them advance in their careers and so on. Um, and, and particularly that's what people are prepared to pay for. Um, there is also an incredible demand on our platform for content that I think would be the kinds of things that universities have traditionally been focused on um, in the humanities, in the social sciences, um, but people aren't as prepared to pay uh, for that. And so as we move to these new models, how are we going to sustain knowledge across all domains and not just what people are immediately prepared to pay for? Yeah. And Emily, you used to be a conference not so long ago. <laughs> now, now, now that that almost seems like a rounding error in the uh, in the cosmic scheme of things. It, I mean, it, it, it is and it isn't. It is, yeah. um, and, and and just speak, I think, to both Sue and Sue and Vivek. Um, sustainability is certainly our challenge, um, and the the big piece of our sustainability. Um, you know, TED is supported by sort of three buckets: um, one, conference attendees who are you know paying a little bit of extra to support free stuff. Um, and then uh, grant funding, which thank you. And then we're in media. And that is the really interesting place for me to think about sustainability. How, as a media organization, do we use the tools of media support, uh, traditionally advertising, to sustain ourselves? And then to reflect on your point a bit, um, meeting user expectations as they grow, we have almost the opposite, um, where we are a place people come to because they want to think about big things. They want to talk about, you know, the, the number one conversation on our, our unofficial LinkedIn group is, is there a God? Um, which is amazing. Um, how do we complement each other, actually? Tim, uh, the, the press is, has evolved to a big thing and a multifaceted thing. How are you thinking about the evolution of your platform there at, 
at uh, Harvard Business School. Yeah, so HBR has always been an odd media organization because it, it's never been about advertising. It's always been the foundational value is in the part that's really hard to replicate, which are the articles in the middle of the magazine. Um, they had a very clear kind of author. They're experts uh, in their field who want to reach a particular kind of audience. And then we have this big machine that, that transforms those ideas into articles that are consumable, consumable by a particular audience that we're aiming for, which is to say practicing managers, the C-suite, who are willing to pay us for them. So we get content, we transform it, and then we're reaching a very particular audience with those, we call them the well articles, uh, somewhere between 4,000 and 7,000 words. And I think that helps us. It's not quite a monopoly position, but it's something close it's very to close. a monopoly <laughs> position. And that's the foundational value, and it's this very clear platform of what HBR does and who we connect and how we're governed. And I think the biggest challenge for us is as we've thought about transforming the organization by reorganizing to bring the book publishing program in line with the magazine about launching and relaunching a website is how do you make sure you protect that foundational value and don't start squandering it in pursuit of other things that may appear uh, valuable in the short term. So advertising dollars. If you're all about subscriber value, then you don't ever want to do anything that's going to take away even the perception of value from that core audience. So you never want to run things um, merely for the sake of advertisers, even though they're going to offer you a lot of money to do it. So avoiding those sorts of temptations so that you're not damaging the organization as you try to grow it.